conditions. The bad news is the band is still in bed. Fair enough, it's only two in the afternoon. The good news is I think I've found a pig. The first time I became aware of Bougainville and what was going on there or that anything was going on there was when I was riding my bike through a storm water drain in my mid-twenties. I saw a large piece of graffiti that said, Bougainville, Australia's hidden war. About a couple of years later I started working for the Foreign Affairs Department. They were sending people over to Bougainville to work with this peace monitoring group. And a few of my mates had gone and they said you didn't have to do any desk work. So I said, right, I'll give that a go. And uh, next thing I know is landing in a Roper Airport. You get off the Hercules and you see this, what used to be an airport, and it's just decimated, just destroyed, flat, burnt out. Then you get in a truck on the way to Arawa, and you see these lean, very muscly looking, very black people walking around with 20 inch long grass knives, and you think, this is a hectic place. We were staying at an outpost called Siracatau. The security guards were uh, a couple of ex-BRA blokes, one of them called Big Joe and one of them called Dominic. And these blokes were bloody hilarious. You know, Big Joe was this huge bodybuilder guy. Oh, 10 points. So these men who were you know, killers during the crisis, and, you, and you, that's all you, that's the first thing you knew about them, it was a story. And, uh, yet they were so gentle to be around. And uh, we used to stay up at night singing songs. That's how I learned Pigeon, talking to those guys, playing songs, writing songs. And they taught me, you know, as you got to know them, they taught me local folk songs and talk place dialects. And they just sort of gave me another into the place. It's called Narain Arts. And the it's in the Nagavis language of the Bana district. It's just a love song about a girl called Neraina. Neraina, why do you make those shy signs at me? Why do you smile in that funny way at me? I think you'd like me. <laughs> I think that's when I realised that uh, music was an important thing here, that it could be, it could be very useful in, in the job I was doing. You know, the crowd has, has been uh, expecting us all along, the Bull Macau band. We're really glad to see the crowd here today. It's not a problem. So I'll take it through along Cameron's secession ceremony. Like playing one more sing sing on you, Bala. And it was, it was, it was like it was something special that I had in my life. Doing something for Bougainville, which I have never experienced with anyone like Fred.
first met Fred in 1998. It was also Fred's first time to come to Bougainville. Please make him welcome Mokuk Bamboo Band. Fred found out that I was also a musician. He came and asked me if we can put a tape together. A tape that can be distributed all over Bougainville so that people could listen to peace songs. So we worked intensively for two weeks just in, the stu in, in that library up there. People coming in and out, kids from the school just going, what the hell's going on? Bands coming in choir coming in, all sorts of people came in and sang songs of peace because so many Bergen Brilliants had turned their experiences into songs. The songs were, were very much chosen especially to really drive the peace process into, into another stage of uh, reconciliation within the province itself. We duplicated copies, sem uh, uh, mass production. And uh, that's around about probably 20,000 copies, I don't know. They came to, off to the, our office and gave us a whole carton of it. And I was responsible, I got the women to distribute and give some to the young people and all that. And they all liked it. Everywhere you went on Bougainville at that time, these peace tapes were played here and there. It also contributed in a very big way in convincing people of Bougainville to be once again united, to be able to know through those songs, what, what peace was all about. No one get that. No one get the pigs, no one get the doggy stuff. And that's all. I never went there with the sense that, that I was coming from a better culture to impose a peace process on them, which they weren't capable of themselves. You, you really have to go in, ready to learn something new every day and, um, being open to people and open to their humour and open to their stories and their music and their customs and, and, and that makes for a wonderful exchange. Miss the place? Bougainville, I miss Bougainville a heap. <laughs>